So last week, you watched us take part in the final race of the Medway Yacht Club Autumn Series. And we had a cracking sail, a great time on the boat, and actually got a good result as well, as we won. This week, it's a bit of time away from the water, but it's still involving boats. We bought a new dinghy, so we thought we'd show you what we've got. So, I've just come inside to get the camera because I'm playing with a new toy and it occurs to me that um, a lot of you won't have seen one of these and you might be interested in it. Hannah and I have sailed these before. Um, we've had two of them actually. Uh, it's a dinghy if you haven't guessed. And it looks, it looks like that. Pick it far enough back. Get a sense of it. It's a National 12 for those that don't know. If you're sailing in the UK, you're quite possibly familiar with it because it's one of the oldest dinghy classes still sailing. Although, as you might gather from what you can see there, the original boats didn't look much like that. And this, by the way, is not a new boat. This is um, getting on to 20 years old, or at least the design is. So um, it's by far from modern, but um, at the same time, it's still going to be quick, still going to be a lot of fun. And, um, and they're, they're great boats. The, the, reason, the reason we bought another one is because we haven't done much dinghy sailing this year. I was planning on sailing that Vortex, which you might have seen in a previous film. On the odd times I got a chance to sail it because Hannah didn't feel like she was going to get much chance to go sailing. But that didn't really happen. So, um, so we sold that and we decided if we're not going to get to do much sailing, and Hannah doesn't get to do much anyway, what we should do is enjoy the odd bit of sailing we get to do. And then when we thought about that, the boat we've had the most fun in is a National 12. So we decided to buy another National 12. And this one, contrary to the sail number on the sail, is 3441. Uh, which is a feeling foolish design. Sorry about all the cars going past. National 12s were invented, if that's the word, uh, um, in the 30s, 36 perhaps? I'm, I'm trying to give you a lesson here on National 12s and I'm by no means an expert. We sail the boats, we enjoy them, we love them. They're great, great boats, great class, great everything, but I'm no expert. Anyway, 1936, I think, the RYA, or the Royal Yachting Association, as I imagine it was probably called then, um, it, it wanted to come up with a new class to not exactly replace, but sail alongside the International 14, because dinghy sailing back then, I believe, was pretty much all kind of local one designs. So prior to this, the RYA um, created what was the International 14 to kind of create a, a general class that would be sailed throughout the country. And it was a huge success. Loads of them were built and they were really good, except they were really expensive. And that was kind of getting away from a little bit of what the RYA wanted. So they, they instructed, well I don't know whether it was instructed or whether Uffa Fox, who's a legendary British dinghy designer, kind of came up with one. But one way or another, there was a tie up between the RYA and Uffa Fox. And he developed National 12 number one, uh, which was known as Alpha King because he thought it was going to be, it was his, he put all his work into it, it was, going to, it was the greatest dinghy ever made and um, felt for a long time it would still be quick. And indeed it was. Um, as you probably can guess, it was a much more traditional boat than that. Uh, they were kind of clinker built and um, it was a traditional little two man boat, not especially wide, but it was 12 foot long and they have back then the equivalent of like 10 square meters of sail. Um, and that's all they have. There's two sails. 10 square metres total sail area, 12 foot long, and there's odd little rules, like there's a minimum weight rule, that over the years has slowly come down, but um, is now 70 something kilos. Um, there's a, do they call it rise of floor? The sort of rule that, that prevents designers creating kind of super skinny moth-like hulls. So there's a rule in there about that to kind of keep the boats relatively conservative. They introduced, in I think the 60s, a maximum width because the boats were getting wider and wider and wider. And this is six foot six wide, which is the, the now current rule. 
So they're 12 foot long, 6 foot six wide, a certain weight, 10 square metres of sail, two sails, but pretty much, and there's a lot of detail rules, but pretty much after that, anything else goes. You can do what you want. And that's one of the things I love about it. So many people love the kind of, shall we call it, laser mentality, where it's one design, one boat, best sailor wins. And, and I know, you know, that's got a lot going for it, and I'm not particularly knocking it, because it's a great, a great way of establishing, you know, an out-and-out -out sailor speed. But to me, a large part of what makes a good sailor is not just how he pulls a string, but it's how you get the best out of the boat, how you develop a boat, how you set a boat up. And that's the sort of thing the National 12 does well. Some people would be put off by the amount of string on it, but to me, that's the thing that makes it appealing. Um, this one, we bought from down in um, Hampshire. Um, Alan, oh sorry, Alan, can't remember your name. Lovely bloke, knows his sailing, very good sailor. He's designed or working on the F101, the new foiling sort of try and round stroke moth type thing. He's um, looks after the SB20 class, build his O's, so he knows he's sailing. And he built, bought this boat for him and his daughters to sail. Sorry, when I was out here just now, there wasn't a car going past. And all of a sudden it's got busy. He bought this boat for him and his daughters to sail because they are great um, father-son, father-daughter, mother-son, mother-daughter, family type boats. Um, because there's not too much sail, because they're basically they're basically stable, although when you first get in the National 12, they feel really unstable. They're very tippy, they're like this. But as soon as it falls onto them, um, see the back of the boat, very wide. So all the time it's on, where's my finger, the kind of narrow centre section, it's obviously quite tippy, but as it rolls and rolls up onto the edge, it gets a lot more stable. So they're actually quite, quite forgiving little boats. And he bought it for him and his daughter. His, him and his daughter, for one reason or another, didn't get on with it so well. They've changed to sailing something else. So he put it out for sale. And, and I didn't really want to buy it. I wanted to buy an old boat. Do what we always do. Hannah and I, we tend to buy old boats that are unloved and do them up. But I went to see this boat and he's done such a good job of doing it up. It's all had... It's all had a, a new professional two-pack paint paint job. Uh, I should point out as well, this is a Nigel Waller boat, which won't mean anything to anyone who hasn't sailed National 12s, but Nigel Waller builds some fantastic boats, and this is all carbon. It's a carbon fibre hull, carbon fibre foils, carbon fibre mast, carbon boom, carbon everything. Um, it's rigid as anything, right down to weight, there's a load of lead on it, um, and in the, in the previous life, You can probably tell by now this is called Pepsi, but in a previous life it was called Matilda, I think, and I don't know the guy that, uh, that was sailing it then, but he's still sailing in the class. He, he came, well, I don't, I don't, my apologies, whoever you are, I can't remember your name, but it appears from a quick Google search of race results, from when the day this boat was bought, it finished second everything which is, of course, no mean feat, because National Tours back then were highly, well, they still are highly competitive, but they were even especially competitive then, and um, second in um, the Nationals, the Inlands, the Burton Cup, which is the big, one big race that the National Twelves have. They set a um, square leg course, a mile beat, a mile reach, a mile run, a mile beat, and so on. And you do that twice with a beat to the finish line, so it's 12 miles long around this square course. It's called the Burton Cup. Every year at the Nationals, that's the one big event, the one race, the one race everyone wants to win. And I think he came second in that as well. So it's, it's got pedigree, this boat. The class, of course, has moved on. They now have T foils on the back, and the hull designs have, have, have refined more to, um, I think, make them a little bit less sticky in the in light winds. But um, this feeling foolish design kind of dominated the end of the 90s and the 2000s. Um, it was the design to have until they suddenly invented winged rudders. So it's it's got pedigree. The design it's got pedigree. This boat. So um, and Alan has done a fab fabulous job of doing it up. So like I say, I went to see it fully intending not to buy it really if I could find an excuse not to because it was a bit more than we wanted to spend. We um, we just wanted a boat to do up and then we can break the cost down over time because we're not going to be using it that much. It's um, it's just something for us to uh, play with when we get a chance. But it's such a nice boat with such good equipment on it, I couldn't not buy it really. If I'm being honest, it really probably wants new sails. The rudder's a bit tired. 
it's not and it's not roped how I'd like it. Um, a lot of the controls are kind of in the wrong place and haven't got enough purchase and so forth. But that's all kind of detail stuff. The sales aren't bad by any means. If I... It's a PNB jib, a dyna and a dynamic main. It seems to be <coughs> very full at the top. There's no wind for me to really show it, but. Um, But um, yeah, fabulous boat. One of the things that um, people often say to Hannah and I when they know we sail this, because we've had some pretty full on boats over the time. Um, a lot of spinnaker boats, asymmetric boats, fast boats. They say, don't you get bored in the National 12? Well, I tell you, you don't get bored in the National 12. They, um, they're fabulous, they're really rewarding boats to sail. And the one thing that's good about a National 12 is it does everything really well. They're, they're fabulous to windward. They'll point as high as anything. And because they've got a really fine bow, if I show you the bow. Really narrow bow sections, slices through the waves beautifully. You, of course, have got fabulous controls. You can adjust the, uh, all, all the shrouds and the forestay independently, the lowers independently. So you can break the rig as you're sailing it. Um, when you're going downwind, because you've only got, you haven't got a spinnaker, you maximise what you've got. You tend to let the lured shroud off so that um, the mast will straighten up and fold forward slightly and you get more power out of it. There's a lot of quirkiness, tweakiness to it to make it go quick. Um, and as I say, that's the sort of thing I like. To me, that's what makes a good sailor. Not someone who can just pull the right string and wiggle the stick in the right direction, or is physically fit, but someone who really knows how to work a boat. And I'm no expert at this, <laughs> but I'd like to be, yeah. It's good to do. Um, so anyway, yeah. Plenty of things to pull, plenty of things to um, adjust. Six foot six wide, oh, and only 12 foot long. Can prove to be fun. There's a famous saying in National 12 sailing that although it's a 12 foot long boat, <coughs> on a windy day, the helm should be six foot six, 12 foot six from the bow. Because if you haven't got your bum right on that corner, you, um, the front of the boat, is ri you risk, you don't pitch pole, but the nose goes down, you all slow up and it all gets uncomfortable. Um, so much so that on my last boat, I stuck a little foam pad there so that I was slide, as I was sliding my backside along, I knew when I'd got to the back of the boat because it was too easy to just slide off the back. Um, Hannah's oh. Hannah's come out now to take some pictures. Yeah. I wanted to see my new boat. Show them how the dangly pole works. I was just talking about the sail controls and I was oh, going to show them a dangly like pole. We had a 12 three years ago. Mm. I remember that. Um, <laughs> It's not the best sound name. It's not the best name for a control in the world, is it? Dangly pole, but it is exactly what it says on the tin. Oh, yeah. There's a there's a pole that dangles by the mast, yeah. and it lets you, in simple terms, it lets you goose swing the jib. So when you're on a run, you just pull that string, and it automatically launches and and sets the jib. But that's kind of doing a disservice, really, because pretty much. As long, if you're going upwind, you just shoot the jib like normal, but as soon as you're off wind and you're going, you know, on a fetch or a reach, you play the pole and you can set the jib then to any position and the pole will tighten the leech and maximise the power out of the jib. So, um, again, it's all part of the tweakiness of sailing a National 12. Actually, very oh. impressed with the amount of string I remember which rope to pull. Because <laughs> I don't know the colour code yet. No, no well, we're going to change it all as well. There's lots of things to change. <laughs> It's very pretty, isn't it? Yeah. We were a bit two minds about um, the paint job and the name Pepsi when we saw it. Well, but I still don't like the name Pepsi. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm warming to it because it is Pepsi colours and it, and it looks better in the flesh than it did in the pictures, doesn't it? I don't think the pictures you put up, Alan, did it a, did its a justice, really. It's a very pretty boat. And Hannah liked the pink trolley, which you'll notice <coughs> is, a, that is a custom made. <laughs> cradle that hugs the side, shape of the boat perfectly. So anyway, while Hannah's taking some pictures, <laughs> I'll, um, I need to, um, there she is, just going to update Facebook for all those people that follow Facebook. Um, 
I need to pack it away because it's already getting dark. It's a problem in the winter, isn't it? I've been out this morning sailing a radio controlled laser, which maybe we'll do a film on in the future because we're still sailing. <laughs> Although Hannah and Elizabeth were hockey, playing hockey, which is what I should have been doing, I guess. But uh, anyway, before I pack it away, I thought you guys would like to see it. National 12. Hopefully, we'll get a film of us sailing because they're fantastic little boats. You might have to wait a bit for that though, although there is a race on New Year's Day, so 